Welcome back to Speaking Llama, a Survivor podcast. We are here with the 13th person out, 12th voted out of Australian Survivor Heroes versus Villains. Uh, David, how are you doing this morning after what I'm sure was uh, a, a maybe a tough night to watch? Yeah, watching it back's uh, always interesting. Um, you kind of relive moments and emotions from six months ago, so uh, it's always always a challenge. Uh, watching it, kind of, I kind of knew what happened, but then watching it actually play out, yeah, it kind of brings back all those emotions. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, David, Alex, and I, we pick a fantasy tribe going into every season of Survivor. You were on Team Caleb, uh, and so. I'm I just very sad to see you go, but I think I'm more sad that we didn't get to see more of you. What what was your strategy out there that maybe we didn't get to see? Because uh, I'm sure you were out there playing the game hard. Yeah, so early on, I knew physically I'd be really good in challenges and I'm a strong social player. So I'm very strong with creating relationships with people around me and and building trust and, and alliances. So that was my that was my strategy early in, in the game. And, and obviously we were winning so many challenges that we, we our first tribal was was day nine uh and it was the rogue vote which was very easy and then it was basically day 14 which was the shani vote so basically two weeks into being on the island we didn't really have to to work and 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 try and build strategy with with each other and, and go to tribal council for a tough vote so it was kind of unique in that regard where um we just we weren't pressured in that regard to do that now what i wanted to do was build relationships with the people that get to a certain point and then we really try and make a move. So um, I was with Nina and Sam, um, obviously when we tried to create the the Haley blindside um, vote, that was the mutiny. And, and for me, that was the point where it was kind of almost my, all right, this is the opening party. Like this is our big move and we can really try and make some moves from here. We'll flip the game. Like we get Haley out, we can flip the game from here. We go to um, we go with Liz to Shawnee and George and be like, this is what we've done. We're willing to branch out from the OG wow. heroes and move on. So that was my big play there that um, I was willing to to work with Sean, Nina, Sam, Matt, all that to a certain point. And then us three, Nina, Sam and I as a strong three, we're going to break out from that and kind of flip the game. Mm-hmm. In the end, it didn't work out. Um, and that kind of sucks that the mutiny happened, but... <laughs> I knew that early on in the game, I didn't want to be a strong strategic player because I was already already strong socially and physically. Mm-hmm. So I knew later in the game, that was when my strategic element was going to come out. Um, and yeah, it just kind of didn't work out in the end. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Those non-eliminations get you. <laughs> yeah, I <they> certainly do. <laughs> well, David, I, I'm curious to know, you know, day one, you step on the mat and you see it's heroes versus villains. You see a lot of returning players out there. Uh, what's going through your mind? What are you thinking when you see all these returning players? And, and a follow-up question, what does it feel like to stand next to Sean? <laughs> <laughs> well, straight away, um, well, Sean, I, I used to play AFL with mm-hmm. uh, Aussie Rules. We played the same sport. We played against each other. So um, one thing I wanted to do on the footy field was never get near Sean um, because he's a beast of a man and he could tackle me and, and hurt, injure me, basically. Um, but he uh, standing next to him, yeah, it is intimidating, but... That was, that was the whole thing. Day one on the mat with returnees and strong game players. It's like you've got mm-hmm. you've got um, uh, Flick, uh, Haley, and George, the top three from their season. It's mm-hmm. And then you've got Simon also was in that season. You go, well, you've got four players from one season, prior relationships. They've played the game together. They know what the ins and outs of the game. And, and being a Survivor fan, you kind of know a little bit, obviously, about the game. But when you're actually out there playing, it's 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 intimidating to play against people who have done it before and are great players. So immediately straight away, I was like, step back. And I was like, oh, wow, this is this is real right now. And I've got to play against some big players. I love that. Absolutely. You mentioned, right, before, I know that you're a Survivor fan. What was unexpected, right? Going in, like you thought maybe something was going to be one way, but you didn't expect it. Just how quickly things can change out there. I mean, you know, watching it, things can change quickly and, and the way the edit is, but being actually out there and, and one day you feel like you're, you're with this person and you're working this way and, and an hour later it can just completely change because a conversation's taken place um, beside you or behind you and, and that person comes back to you with information that you just didn't think would happen. So just how quickly things change. I mean... I knew going in, the challenges would be fun, which they were. Um, the, the elements are going to be hard and difficult, which is in the weather, the food, your shelter, being cold, all that stuff. That's all part of it. 
it was more just the gameplay and how quickly it can change. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Well, and and you were a complete challenge beast in, in almost all of those challenges. Did you have a favorite <laughs> challenge out there uh, to play? Oh, it's hard. <laughs> um, I mean, I love them all. The obstacle courses were great um, for different things, but the obstacle courses go so quick. It's like mm-hmm. you all of a sudden go through things and then you're at the end when there's a puzzle and um, that's kind of just immediately you get the adrenal, adrenaline rush and then within a minute they're over and you're kind of stuck there <laughs> Like sweating and, and <laughs> breathing heavily, and like you, you want to keep going and and being like you said a competitive beast and, and loving challenges that, that kind of just like I wanted to keep going. So um, they were they were fun. Um, I mean, I only got to do one individual immunity challenge, which mm. coming into the game that was where I thought I could really prosper and and go really well in, and um, just being kind of the body shape and size and coming from an athletic background, I thought mm-hmm. that would be really something I could go well in. So. Of course, the first challenge is water and a lifeguard wins. <laughs> Which, uh, but that's, yeah, yeah. I mean, Nina and, and Matt did so well in that. And and I think we bought, well, all three of us went for about 50 minutes. And yeah. um, that was kind of coming up. It honestly felt like that was 10 minutes mm-hmm. um, just for, for myself. It felt wow. like it was quick. And I didn't realize that there was only two other people still left. So that was, um, that was, that kind of sucked. I was like, oh, there's only two other people left. But yeah. to answer your question about a favorite challenge, um, I don't know. We won, we won so many. And that was <laughs> yeah, they were all fun. Yeah. All the ones you won. Uh, right. Yeah, all the ones you won. Yeah. I, I actually, the one that we, the one that we threw where we wanted yeah. Rogue to go out and that holding beam, I actually really wanted to challenge myself on that because. Mm. Again, that's been done before in Survivor and, and I'd, lo- I'd love to be able to see the mental capacity of me holding myself up on that beam. So mm-hmm. that was um, that was the only one I really missed out on that I really wanted to ha- have a go in. Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, the you mentioned earlier that things kind of change on a dime. Uh, I am interested to hear from your perspective, right? So you have the Haley blindside set up. It doesn't happen because of the mutiny. And the person that you're going to do it with, Liz, goes over yeah. to the other side. What what were you thinking in that moment? And then also, was there any thought of like working with Liz when she when y'all merged? Yeah. So immediately we're like, this is going to be great, or we're doomed. That was that mm-hmm. were two scenarios. Great in terms of if Liz goes to George and Shawnee and says, "Hey, Nina, Sam, and David saved me, or they were going to save me by voting out Haley." So let's work with that. That was one scenario. The other scenario was, which is what happened, was George goes, no, 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 I want to work with Haley this whole time, which completely then backfired on us because we then don't have anywhere to turn. So we immediately went, well, crap, like Liz is obviously going to go work with George and, and Shawnee and George wants Haley. So Nina, Sam and I were going, where do we stand right now? This is completely backfired on us. So that's where we kind of came up with a plan. Just go, okay, well, let's try and go back to OG Hero Strong and and go back to Sean, go back to Flick, go back to Matt, who we thought we had at the time, yeah. and say, oh, no, it was all just elaborate plan. We, that didn't happen. <laughs> like, let's just go back together. Because we were kind of stuck in limbo. Like, we were, yeah. we were only at three um, in that stage. So we didn't have the numbers. Um, so that would have... Yeah, it's disappointing that the mutiny happened because that would have been a great play for us. Um, I, I wanted to work with Liz... If I had to survive last night's vote, I still would have wanted to go to Liz and work with her because we did have a great relationship where um, we worked together for three or four days and came up with a great plan to to do a great blindside. And and she is a person open to uh, to a lot of gameplay. So um, that would have been something that I would have explored later on. Um, but as I said, to answer your question, we were kind of stuck in limbo because George had his own plans, uh, which no one knew that kind of he wanted to work with Haley. So, Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's unfortunate. Uh, yeah. well, well, hey, David, as a survivor fan myself, I've always wondered what it feels like uh, when you vote for someone at tribal council and then they get an idol played for them and you know your vote has just been nullified. <laughs> What's going yeah. through your mind at that point, uh, you know, leading up to seeing your name <laughs> be the one? Yeah, out. I know. Well, we um, we knew we knew Liz obviously had the idol and I tried to get it to play it for herself rather than yeah. for Shawnee. Um, so when... Obviously, information because Matt and Haley flipped. Information must have got fed back to them where our vote was going, because she knew to play it for for Shawnee. So, um, to then see that she played it for Shawnee and, and my last effort could go, no, play it for yourself, <laughs> 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 um, which didn't work as she knew. Um, so then that kind of and then obviously you know then another name's going to come up. Like uh-huh. you know 
the vote's going to be who's the next, who's the JLP read out next? Um, and obviously, you hope it's not yourself. You, you hope it's someone else, even though it's someone else close to you. You're just like, I want to survive one more day in the game. So mm-hmm. the feeling you get when he reads out your name and you know you're going to be the rest of the votes because that's just kind of how it always works. And um, seeing myself get read out and it was just immediately heart dropped. You kind of go into shock. That's kind of what I went to, I reckon. I, yeah. I My exit interview out there that you saw last night, I was kind of still smiling and still like, oh, I was part of the blind side. But <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> well, then going back to the room, like once you leave the game and exit, I was like literally just sitting there going like, what the hell just happened? And <laughs> honestly, I reckon it still didn't last. It still lasted until i got back to australia mm. i was sitting in the airport going like what am i doing like in the airport i'm still meant to be in the game like that mm. was just complete blindside we thought we had the numbers and i was still in shock so it's um it's not something it's not a great feeling and then reliving it is even worse but yeah <laughs> uh, i can imagine and hope hopefully i will one day never have to imagine that but uh you took it like yeah. a champ Uh, You know, one of the things we always like to ask uh, players as they're out there, right, we only see a very small segment of everything that goes on. Yeah. Was there anything that was special or fun or exciting that uh, happened for you on the island that we didn't get to see? I think the um, the best day that I describe out there, which a few others um, have said as well now post Samoa, that coffee day where we won the breakfast mm. was like the best day in the game by an absolute mile. It was, it was the funnest day. We were all energized with coffee. Like I was kind of, I was, I mean, obviously you got to fit a, a lot of time into a 90 minute episode. So we understand you can get cut out, but that day watching, if you guys had to watch it back, like fully that, that maybe half an hour of us going absolutely mad and crazy on coffee and, and just kind of, yeah, just I'll, I'll, first time I've ever tasted coffee in my life. So okay, you, can imagine really? what, you can imagine what I was going through. Um, all the families and stuff. I was buzzing and um, yeah, everyone was pissing like laughing at me and, and all that stuff. So that was one of the moments that kind of you look back and go, that was a special day. Like we were just having fun for that four or five hours and and it was awesome to just kind of let the game go for a little bit and we were just having fun together. Um, and yeah, we were just buzzing. So that was definitely something that, that uh, I wish got shown a bit more. <laughs> Incredible. That's awesome. Have you had coffee since then or or no? Yeah, so I, I don't want to be I don't want to be a day a coffee I don't want to be a coffee a day drinker because then you like I just don't do that. Like I lasted thirty two years of my life not drinking it, um, so I have it maybe two or three times a week now, um, and I, I do enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey David, last question for you. We've got um, you know you're on a heroes versus villains uh, season. You were on the heroes tribe. Do you think that was the right tribe for you? Uh, why or why not? I I kind of looking back now, like in my life, in terms of like playing footy and and things that happened throughout my career, I was cons- like called a hero in terms of like some things happened that that's why I would have been put on the heroes. Um, but looking back now, kind of I wish it was a villain because like villains have a bit more fun and and you can kind of then the persona is not stuck in your head where oh, I kind of like I got it kind of stuck in my head that oh I'm on a heroes I kind of have to be a bit of a hero mm-hmm. early. Whereas if you want the villains, then you get stuck in your head and well, let's be villainous and have a bit of fun and, and play around. So I kind of wish that that was a bit more um, in my head early on that, well, yeah, I'm in the heroes, but I don't have to play like one. Um, so yeah, I kind of, that 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 maybe uh, is another thing that I reckon I would have been a pretty cool villain um, just to try and play early on. I mean, I love being a hero, but I do think I could have been a cool villain um, and really trying to team up with a couple of people and, and making some cool moves. For yeah. sure. And and that move with Sam and you and Nina trying to get Haley out, I, that's a villainous move to me. So I love seeing that. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, that's I, I, in that moment, we were like, oh, how good is this? Like, we've got this plan. We're going to tribal. Like, we're going to absolutely blindside Haley. We were loving it. I mean, that would have been the next thing. Like, waking up the next day on the beach without Haley there, making that move, it would have been euphoria, mm-hmm. uh, knowing that we made such a big move in Survivor. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, your time was just too short for us. Uh, thanks so much for hopping on uh, today and we wish the best of luck for you. And maybe, you know, one day we'll see you back out there. Hopefully I'll do it again. I'm telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> thanks awesome. guys. I really appreciate it.